let's talk about solar on the roof quickly also. I don't like, personally, I don't like putting photovoltaic arrays on the roof of a house, especially a shingle roof. Reasons being, number one, the shingles might be not in the best of condition. Now, we're going up on a roof where when we walk on those shingles, we could be causing some damage. We're going to be drilling holes in the roof. We're going to be making potential leak points. Um, if the people just replaced their shingles seven years ago, oh my gosh, they don't want to put shingle, brand new shingles on again. My preferred mounting technique would be an elevated ground mount. You don't want to ground mount right down near the ground. You're going to get snow coverage on that. You're going to have lawn mowers throwing rocks out and damaging your modules. But you get something where the bottom edge of the array is over your head and up from there easily. Um, you can get to that with a ladder. Uh, it's not going to be subject to damage and you're not putting holes in someone's roof and potentially damaging their shingles. The downside of a ground mount rack is now I am putting concrete in the ground and steel in the yard and that's going to add to the expense compared to aluminum L feet and rails and, uh, and roof boots and standoffs on a shingle roof. So it is more expensive to do it that way in the short run. In the long run, however, I think it might pay off. Here though is why most photovoltaic arrays go on the roof. That's the only place in a relatively small residential yard where someone might not have a shading issue. The only way to get rid of a shadow from a tree is either you have to proceed to the north or you have to go up. Typically, the only place in a yard that you're going to be able to go up and do that is on the roof. And because so many PV arrays are roof mounted, most customers who are not well informed assume that's the only place it can go. So for all you solar PV technicians out there, keep that in mind and at least be fair to the customer and inform them that a ground mount array might be an option depending on shading issues that they have. If the roof is the only option, now we're talking this stuff, this stuff, and fall arrest equipment. Now, here's the deal. OSHA says for construction work, as soon as the sole of your shoes are six feet off the ground, you need to have fall arrest. What fall arrest is, let me show you quickly here. A fall arrest device is something that will decelerate you as you fall. This is a standard folded and sewn deceleration device. I have a locking snap ring that will go to a point of anchorage. That point of anchorage is supposed to be suitable to hold my weight and then some. This particular device has the fall arrest device right at the anchor point. Now, when I fall, which I hope I don't ever do, my body will put a force, a linear force, a tensile force onto this deceleration apparatus right here and all of the stitches will sequentially pop and it'll go pop, 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 pop out like that and it will extend out 42 inches. By the time I've extended out 42 inches, I am now abruptly falling, or I should say abruptly stopping and it is supposed to decelerate me to the point where when I hit that abrupt end, I have no more than 1,800 pounds of force right here because that's where it's going to hit me. The force is going to be transmitted down from that dorsal D-ring through the harness and right into my groin. I'm allowed to have 1,800 pounds of force there. Holy cow. So that's something that you have to have Otherwise, you could have more than 1,800 pounds of force and you'd be in real trouble. One thing to be aware of, this thing is going to deploy 42 inches out, three and a half feet. Now, if you're three stories up, that's not a concern. But while you are on the roof, and we'll show this a little bit later, you want the slack pulled out of your rope. If between this anchor point and you, you are going to be on what's called a rope grab. If between here and here, you have a whole lot of slack of rope, and if you fall, all of that slack first has to be taken up before your D-ring yanks on the anchor point and this thing deploys. So if you're up on a roof, 
that let's say is 20 feet high and you have 18 feet of slack rope up on the roof between the anchor point and you and then this is going to roll out another three and a half feet you're going to hit the ground with a thud and it's not going to feel good broken ankles broken legs broken arms not a good thing so it's important to keep that kind of thing in mind especially with this type of device the slack rope can really come up to bite you now let's talk a little bit about this stuff i'm holding here. this stuff all came out of a bucket you can buy these relatively inexpensive safety kit in a bucket for roof safety work they're affordable they comply with all the OSHA and ANSI regulations, or at least they allege to. Um, but they are inexpensive, and the materials, in some cases, I don't think are the highest quality. For long-term, repetitive loading and unloading of your rope and things of that nature, I would opt for a different option. But first we're going to show you this, then we're going to get into what I consider to be...